with the UK and global economies heading towards recession, why are central banks planning to increase interest rates? Interest rates increase the cost of borrowing, increase the mortgage costs, and lead to lower economic growth and are likely to cause a deeper recession. Well, it's a tricky balancing act, but in this video we'll look at why central banks are planning to increase interest rates and whether it is a mistake or not. So first of all, the main reason they're increasing interest rates is that inflation has increased far beyond the inflation target. And there's a concern that the inflation is becoming embedded and permanent, which will become increasingly difficult to reduce in the future. So if we look at the UK, the government set an inflation target of 2%, but inflation is currently running at 10%. Now, it was hoped back in 2021 that when inflation first appeared, it would prove temporary. If we look back at uh, 2008 and 2011, you can see there was a spike in cost push inflation caused by rising energy prices or devaluation, and the central bank kept interest rates low. And this proved correct because inflation was temporary. But the problem is, as we entered into 2022, it appeared that the inflation not only was not temporary, but was actually getting worse. Worsened by the Ukrainian war, which pushed up energy prices, inflation has become much more embedded. And the inflation we see now is not just the headline inflation, but also core inflation, service sector inflation, and rising nominal wages. Now, if we go back to the 1970s and 80s, in that period, inflation was very high and also it persisted for many years. And then in the 1980s, when the uh, government finally decided to reduce inflation, it caused a lot of economic pain. So in the UK, interest rates were increased to 16%, but a tight fiscal policy. And this led to a very deep recession and unemployment that persisted for many years. A similar story in the US, where the US Federal Reserve increased interest rates a lot. Now, the concern is that if you let inflation get higher, then the resulting recession has to be deeper and deeper. So it's better to act preemptively and early rather than late. So some economists already say it's later than ideal, but it's better to bring inflation under control now rather than allow it to increase and become embedded because inflation has many costs for the economy, decline in competitiveness, uh, discouraging investment, often associated with low rates of economic growth. Also, if we look at this uh, graph, we can see how base rates have fallen behind inflation. Before the crisis in 2007, inflation was around 2%, base rates around 4 or 5%. So we had a positive real interest rate of 3%. But now in the UK, we have inflation of 10%, but interest rates only 2.25%. So that means the real interest rate is negative, minus 7.75% which is really quite a staggering negative real interest rate. And the rise in interest rate reflects the desire to bring interest rates closer to inflation and reduce the negative real interest rate. Another argument about increasing interest rates is that we need to increase interest rates to get closer to what you might call a more normal uh, rate of interest. Because the ultra low interest rates of the past 15 years with rates close to zero have caused a distortion in many markets with a boom in house prices because mortgages are so cheap. And this boom in house prices has caused the house price to earnings ratio to reach record levels, not just in the UK, but also around the world in countries such as Canada, New Zealand and America. There needs to be a return to a natural rate of interest, which is sustainable and doesn't cause a booming housing market and asset market. Another pressure on increasing interest rates is government fiscal policy. As we saw in the UK recently, the government's unfunded tax cuts in the mini budget pushed got, uh, bond yields higher and also put pressure on the pound. So the bank were forced to indicate they would increase interest rates to protect the value of the pound and keep inflation low. So if fiscal policy is loose, i.e. expansionary and increasing demand, it's more likely we need to increase interest rates. And this is especially true for many countries who are seeing a devaluation in their currency because of a strong dollar. And the strong dollar uh, leads to higher import prices. Now, having said all that, there are still some economists who are concerned about increasing interest rates as we enter into recession for a few reasons. Firstly, 
as the economist David Blankflower has said, a former a member of a Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee, the bank should be aware that many people face an intense cost of living crisis. And that on top of this, rising interest rates would cause a lot of economic hardship and push the economy into a deeper recession than is necessary. So the bank, the central banks don't just have inflation targets. They are usually given wider remits, such as looking at economic growth and unemployment. And if we increase interest rates now, with all the other economic headwinds, it's likely to push the economy deeper into recession. And the cost of this is greater than the cost of inflation. The second point is that although inflation is currently high, there is a hope or forecast that inflation will fall in the near future. And this is for a few reasons. Firstly, oil prices have fallen since early summer. Secondly, the global economy is entering into a big slowdown. There's many pressures pushing downward on global demand such as the weakness of the Chinese economy, slowdown in the US economy, UK heading towards recession, uh, cost of living crisis that many households face. So all these are going to reduce the underlying inflationary pressures because as the economy enters into recession, then inflation will fall of its own accord. Now, the problem with this is that we have been here before. Back in 2021, when inflation first appeared after the COVID pandemic, many economists hoped that the inflation will be temporary. But it hasn't been temporary, it's become embedded. And although expectations aren't particularly high, like in America, they're still quite low, there is this concern that households and firms have become accustomed to higher inflation. So firms are getting away with big price increases. Workers are trying to get higher wages. So whether inflation will fall or not is uncertain. I mean, it's likely inflation will come down from 10%, but whether it will go back to its target of 2% of its own accord is highly debatable. Now, one other reason for not increasing interest rates is to have a new look at monetary policy. For example, at the moment, there's an inflation target of 2%, but some economists have often argued, why not increase the inflation target to 4%? This would give central banks room for maneuver, especially in a period of cost push inflation like we have now. The problem with this is twofold. Firstly, it may erode the credibility of central banks if you keep changing the inflation target. And secondly, even with an inflation target of 4%, they still may need to increase interest rates because inflation is running around 9 or 10%. Now, another interesting example is that this week, The Economist highlighted a few economies that have increased interest rates quite significantly, such as Chile, Hungary, Poland, South Korea, and Brazil. And for example, Chile, interest rates were near zero in 2021, and at the first signs of inflation, they increased interest rates, rather tentatively at first, but now they've reached 11%. And yet, despite this increase in interest rates, inflation has continued to rise in Chile. And this suggests uh, different things. You could say that it shows how uh, inflation isn't responding to higher interest rates. On the other hand, other economists may say they left it too late they should have increased interest rates earlier to bring inflation under control. This uh, shows that even if you increase interest rates, there's no guarantee you'll bring inflation under control. And these countries that uh, the economist calls uh, Heitlandia uh, have had lower growth rate than many of the global average. Though often there is a time lag in monetary policy and that the higher interest rates will eventually bring inflation under control, but it's likely at the expense of a big economic downturn. So what should the central banks do? Well, it really is quite a difficult dilemma because they have been pulled in different directions. Which is worse, allowing inflation to be, remain high and become more embedded and increase inflation expectations? Or is it worse to raise interest rates and precipitate a serious fall in house prices and a serious uh, fall in GDP? It's likely that the Bank of England and other central banks will try to fudge the issue we're certainly going to get a modest increase in interest rates soon. But it may be that that alone is enough to slow down the economy so much that inflationary pressures do start to fall. And given the scale of the cost of living crisis and the weakness of the economy, it's likely that they'll want to go quite, tread quite lightly and not increase interest rates too much, hoping that it comes down of its own accord. But whether it does or not is a really interesting question. And we'll have to wait and see until 2023 to see how much these modest increases in interest rates 
do actually bring down inflation. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the channel, please subscribe. Lots more great videos coming out soon. Thank you. Bye.